As one of the greatest engineers in the Marvel Universe, Tony Stark seems to have a suit for every occasion, and each one is stuffed to the brim with the most cutting edge technology and innovations out there. But when it comes to raw power, there's a few suits that rise above the rest. Remember the Hulkbuster? Yeah, that is the weakest armor that I'm going to talk about today. So if that doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. Hello and welcome to Comic Drake, where I talk about comic books my name is Drake. Let's talk about it. But if you want an Iron Man upgrade for yourself, you might want to start by checking out today's sponsor, the Opera Web Browser. If it's not obvious from my content, I can be a bit scatterbrained and my mind wanders constantly, which is why I love Opera's tab island feature since I can better organize what research project or curiosity that I need to focus on at a time. And speaking of research, Opera's built-in assistant, Aria, can really help speed up the writing process. See how it highlights important details? Well, I can click on those to automatically be brought to a search result. It generates a solid lead and then I can actually do the legwork of doing the research. It's also neat to have Arya act as a thesaurus without having to navigate to another website. And in addition, I have a lot of respect for Opera's built-in privacy features like its tracker blocker and built-in VPN. No extensions needed, it's completely free, and it doesn't have a data cap. And hey, that's just how I use it. Opera Browser is easily customizable and allows you to shape your internet browsing experience to the way you want it to be. So go ahead and give it a shot completely free by clicking the link below. Once again, thank you so much to Opera for making this video possible, but now, let's get back to it. So like I said a second ago, we're starting off with the Hulkbuster. Stark had recently got his company back after losing control of it, and in his absence, the new CEO had been building gamma bombs. But there's a dude out there that famously hates gamma weaponry, and his name is the Hulk. And when Banner found out about the surplus of bombs, he went to go smash. Tony had every intention of dismantling these bombs, but since the Hulk typically doesn't like to talk things through, Stark preemptively donned his experimental armor that was specifically designed to handle the Jolly Green Giant. The Hulkbuster is made from impact-resistant carbon composites, can lift 175 tons, and has a couple of high-powered repulsors. Generally, though, the armor was just there to try and match Banner blow for blow. However, at this time in the comics, Bruce had managed to maintain his intellect even while hulked out, and he cut the fight short when he finally listened to Stark's plea to talk things through and work together to disarm the bombs. Honestly, it was a pretty short and underwhelming fight, but it made for a good toy, and the Hulkbuster became a recurring trend in Stark's arsenal. Because if there's one thing that Marvel Comics loves, it's making their heroes fight each other. The next time we'd see a Hulkbuster was as a part of the Argonaut series, a group of specialized suits that Tony could remotely control with his brain, which proved to be a problem when his mind got hacked and the Argonauts were unleashed upon the world. Each Argonaut was pretty deadly on its own, with the submarine and subterranean suits giving names Namor and the Fantastic Four a run for their money, respectively. But the Hulkbuster Argonaut was so strong that it tore through the Avengers like paper. This suit was easily taking on Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Ms. Marvel, She-Hulk, Spider-Woman, and Luke Cage at the exact same time. And considering that nobody was actually inside the suit, they were not holding back. The only way that it could be stopped was for Tony to zap himself into a coma since the drone was connected to his brain. But yeah, despite just having the power of punching really, really hard, the Hulkbuster Argonaut was still a massive threat. The same could not be said though for the next model, which was used on the Hulk when he came to get revenge on some former teammates that he thought had betrayed him. This bigger and badder armor had rocket-powered gauntlets and injectable nanobots that were specifically designed to drain Bruce's gamma energy and suppress his power. But here's the thing about the Hulk. The angrier he gets, the stronger he gets, and considering that he thought Stark was responsible for killing his wife and unborn child, the Hulk was angrier than ever before and he proceeded to dismantle Stark's new toy by slamming it through the Avengers Tower. Later in Tony's career, he made a black and gold suit of modular armor that could be tricked out for specific missions. It has a big old exosuit called the Heavy Duty Armor, which is like a cross between a Hulkbuster and a War Machine suit. It's got brute strength, guns, lasers, guns, repulsors, guns, a force field, and guns. This suit debuted when Tony had to take on multiple women that were enhanced with a techno-organic virus called Extremis, which can rewrite DNA to make someone the strongest version of themselves. Stark quipped that the heavy duty armor was strong enough to take on the Hulk, just not 13 of them. But to be entirely honest, all that firepower wasn't enough to handle just him either. And even the next Hulkbuster model, which came equipped with more specialized weapons like Gamma Blades, which are these little robots that can set up a field of radiation that are theoretically strong enough to cut through the Hulk's skin, couldn't do a thing against him. But at least it was also a sick-ass transforming sports car, which is something that Tony would actually implement in his next model, except now the car flies. This is Incarnation is Tony's most frequently used Hulkbuster, with it being summoned every time the Avengers needed a little extra muscle, but 
it's never actually done that much. Like it got severely melted in its first appearance and in later fights, it's been destroyed by the Hulk, unsuccessfully used to contain Ultron and then it was ripped to shreds by the Sentry. Thank God that it can repair itself mid fight because I'm pretty sure otherwise the maintenance would be like billions of dollars. But hey, maybe the problem that's causing these suits keep failing over and over again is the quantity instead of the quality. So Stark assembled an entire Hulkbuster drone squadron to fight Banner all at once alongside him, but yeah, uh, those got destroyed too. And even the new addition of shape-shifting adamantium shrapnel that can be fused together to try and chain him down didn't work either. And yeah, the, the irony isn't lost on me that so far this entire video about the strongest Iron Man suits has literally just been about armors that can't actually bust the thing that they're specifically designed to fight. But one, get used to it because Tony's special suits almost never work. And also keep in mind that these are meant to fight one of the strongest entities in the entire Marvel universe. Under normal conditions, the Hulkbuster could squish most other characters like a bug. During the Axis event, many good guys became villains and vice versa, resulting in Stark throwing all of his morals out the window and got the city of San Francisco addicted to Extremis. And then he charged them $100 a day for access to it. During this era, Stark created the Endosim armor, a suit that's based on symbiote like Venom that's made from a sort of living smart metal. The suit contains a little bit of Tony's DNA and he can remotely control it through his mind. In addition to all the standard repulsors and lasers and stuff, the Endosim armor can shapeshift, allowing it to do all of the usual symbiote tentacle attacks, bulk up into a Hulkbuster mode, and even cover Stark's face with a layer of graphene so that he can survive a point blank shot to the face with his visor down. But for as impressive as the Endosim is, Tony was able to do one better. See, when Null, the god of the symbiotes, attacked Earth, Stark flew up to one of his symbiote dragons and injected it with Extremis, allowing Tony to rewrite the dragon's DNA and merge it with Stark tech to create a wearable armor that he dubbed the Extrembiote. The suit is still capable of morphing into a dragon, leading to this sick-ass shot. But when Null unleashed a couple of his symbiote-controlled celestials on Manhattan, Stark was able to use the Extrembiote to override Null's control of one and play a massive game of Rock'em Sock'em Robots in the middle of Times Square. He also used this suit in a team up with Dr. Doom to fight a symbiote enhanced mall Santa and his fleet of pain deer because comics. After Noel was defeated, Stark kept the Extrembiote locked away in his lab in case he needed to take on these symbiotic threats that seemed to happen every other week in the Marvel Universe. And in one such instance was when Iron Man went up against Carnage, which backfired since Carnage was able to steal and fuse with the Extrembiote. But during a fight with Miles Morales, the Stark tech in Carnage's new fused body got damaged, so he went to Stark Industries to force the employees to repair him. But since Tony had lost his company, again, and nobody there knew how to work with Iron Man tech, Carnage instead demanded to be integrated into the new Sentinel robots that they were designing. And at this point, it's not really an Iron Man suit anymore. But ever since Carnage stole the Extrembiote from him, Tony figured that he would pop back up eventually. So he was working on countermeasures, coalescing in the Dragon Slayer armor. It's tricked out with an energy spear and shield, sonic weaponry, a special EMP, and nanites that can help people heal mid-battle by encasing them in a special recovery cast. And by cast, I mean a whole ass Iron Man suit. Now, you might think that all of that technology is completely unbelievable, but that's not the most impressive feat about the Dragon Slayer. Its greatest achievement is the fact that it is an Iron Man armor that was specifically designed to take down one opponent that actually managed to do its job, because that is surprisingly difficult for Tony Stark to achieve. For context, here's a quick rundown of Buster suits that, although being extremely impressive, failed at their task. When the Avengers and X-Men couldn't agree on if the Phoenix was a force of rebirth or destruction, Tony built the Phoenix Killer suit and blasted it. But instead of killing the big fire chicken, the Phoenix instead split into five pieces and enhanced a few members of the X-Men. Squirrel Girl, the hero that's famous for being able to defeat any other character in the Marvel Universe, accidentally cloned herself and she needed to defeat her bushy-tailed doppelganger. So Tony built a suit of anti-Squirrel Girl armor to counter her abilities, but it was able to be defeated by being shot with one of Hawkeye's sticky putty arrows because Stark didn't think to counter the abilities of other heroes. Tony once made a suit to fight Ultron, who jokingly referred to it as Stark's Ultron Buster, which I mean, yeah, I guess it is, but to be entirely honest, there isn't anything about it that's particularly anti-Robot Man. It doesn't feature any unique weapons, and Tony doesn't mention it having anti-hacking defenses or anything like that. It's most likely that we didn't get to see its full capabilities because Ultron fused the suit to Stark's body, resulting in this unholy abomination. And when he was unfused from it, the armor was rendered inert. 
Tony tried to defeat this alien dragon by creating six vehicles that can come together to form one giant buster mech, with Stark basically going, and I'll form the head. Yeah, it's basically just Voltron, and it comes with special moves like a lightning palm strike and tornado kick. But guess what? It got destroyed by a punch to the face. I highly doubt we'll ever see this one again, but I would love to see Stark use it to fight Iceman, considering that Bobby also once made a Voltron suit of his own to fight with. And I don't know, I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, there's also the big-ass suit that Tony used to fight Captain Marvel during the Civil War II event. We know next to nothing about it because as soon as the fight began, Carol punched Tony so hard that he went into a coma. God, Civil War II sucks so much. Uh, presumably the suit is gray in honor of Rhodey, whose death at the hands of Thanos kicked off the entire event. But yeah, no real information about the suit was given in the comics. Writer Brian Michael Bendis explained in his blog that although it never got an official title, he called the suit the Marvel Bust in his script. He also claimed that it uses a unique power source and is stronger than any Hulkbuster that we had seen, and hopefully we would learn more about it in a future story, which never ended up happening because not too long after Civil War II, Bendis came over to DC for an exclusive contract. Moving back to the early 2000s, Thor thought that the Asgardians needed to be more involved in humanity, so he brought Asgard down to Earth and gave Iron Man a magic crystal for him to study in hopes that Stark could turn it into a clean energy source. Though in a small European country, a Church of Thor came into existence, but the nation's tyrannical dictator tried to wipe them out, leading to Thor and the Asgardians to intervene. The only issue, though, is that the country's next-door neighbor is Latveria, led by one Doctor Doom. And since the United States was worried that Asgardian military actions so close to Doom might prompt him to get involved and set off World War III, Iron Man was sent in to handle it. Using the crystal given to him by Thor, Stark made what he dubbed the Thorbuster suit, modeled after the Asgardian destroyer armor, and used it to take on the God of Thunder. This armor was so strong that Stark was able to stop Mjolnir mid-flight, but there was an additional issue. Thor was souped up with extra power from his dad, so he beat up Iron Man, ripped the crystal from his suit, and would have killed Tony if Captain America didn't step in to talk him down. But this wouldn't be the only time that Stark built a destroyer suit, because when Odin's brother came down and attacked Earth, Tony was desperate to get a leg up in the fight and summoned Odin by sacrificing the one thing that he had left of actual value, his sobriety. An interesting touch is that the bottle of wine that he drinks is called Demon dans une bouteille, which is French for demon in a bottle, or at least it would be if I didn't butcher it. Regardless, that's the iconic storyline about Tony's battle with alcoholism, and this actually works, with Stark demanding access to Odin's workshop to make weapons to fight back. Odin accepts and takes Stark to the Dwarven Smiths of Svartalheim, where he proceeds to gain their respect and even help one down the path of sobriety. This is also the infamous comic where artist Greg Land traces over that heartburn meme. Tony and the Dwarves made the absolute hell out of those weapons, and all that was left was to have them blessed by Odin. Yet instead of taking a sword or something, Stark instead opted to have his armor enchanted. But since at this time in the comics his suit was essentially a part of his body, that required Tony to submerge himself inside of the massive cauldron of molten Uru metal. The end result was the Iron Destroyer armor, and even though it was hyped up so much with multiple issues devoted to forging the weapons and the leap of faith into the cauldron, uh, we didn't actually get to really see it do much of anything. And since the Avengers needed to return the Uru back to Odin and the Dwarves at the end of the event, we're never going to truly see the Iron Destroyer in action, which is a massive shame that design kicks ass. Now, for a quick detour, we need to go back to the 80s, where there was a comic called Iron Man 2020, which was about a new Iron Man from the far-off year of 2020 named Arno Stark. So it was only appropriate that once we approached that year in our real world, elements from that comic got incorporated into the mainline continuity. The first of this was introducing Arno, who in the main series of comics was Tony's long-lost adopted brother. And because of shenanigans that are way too complicated to explain here, Arno's destiny was to stop a big intergalactic threat by piloting an ancient mech suit called the God Killer. Now, that ended up not happening, but Tony was inspired by the design, and he made a mountain-sized mech suit based on it to fight off a horde of zombie celestials right alongside giant-sized versions of Thor, She-Hulk, and Ghost Rider, the latter of whom was piloting a whole-ass celestial corpse because comics. The God Killer Mark II is kept in the orbit of Mars, costs $4 billion to build, is powered by eight nuclear reactors, and ultimately needed to self-destruct when Stark was surrounded by enemy celestials. It was essentially just a giant useless bomb. But later, Stark designed his own metaverse called Escape, and when its operating system went rogue, Tony had to fight her. However, by being hooked up to the system, his mind wasn't bound by human limitations, and in this virtual world, he could create anything that his boundless imagination 
dreamt up, leading to the creation of the Godbuster armor, which you might notice is based on the Iron Man 2020 suit. After defeating the rogue AI, Stark still had to deal with its partner in the physical world, so Tony unplugged from the digital space and rushed to create the Godbuster in real life as fast as he could as the memory of the design was fading rapidly, like trying to remember a dream. He built it, but it was too powerful and it blew up after doing the job. In the aftermath, Tony went through a massive existential crisis because he was convinced that he was actually an AI duplicate of the real Tony Stark. So Arno used this as an opportunity to push his brother out of the company and take control of it for himself. And as his first action as CEO, Arno had them try their best to recreate the Godbuster and he wore the armor to be the Iron Man of the new decade, 2020. Tony was able to take all the technology that went into building and maintaining Escape and turn it into a revolutionary suit of armor made out of solid holograms. This suit can look like truly anything, including nothing at all. Any weapon that Stark could think up was at his disposal, much like the Godbuster. And it has light particles that can rebuild things faster than even nanites. And it can create these massive external holograms that are as big as skyscrapers. The hologram armor is one of Tony's greatest achievements in engineering. But in order to defeat his brother, Stark turned it into a life-supporting virtual environment that he trapped Arno in, giving his brother a long-lasting virtual dream where he can live out the rest of his life in electronic, ignorant bliss. Now, how do we one-up that? Easy, Celestial Hulkbuster. So remember the symbiote-infected Celestial that Tony defeated with the Extrembiote? Well, Stark repurposed its corpse into a massive suit that he used to intervene in a fight between Thor and the Hulk. Guns, rockets, repulsors, missiles, gamma drainers. Essentially, every weapon that Stark had ever built was incorporated into this mountain-sized armor. It looks incredibly badass, and it put up a hell of a fight. But after being pushed to truly insane limits, the fight escalated to such a degree that the Hulk erupted with the force of 3,000 gamma bombs, which not only severely damages the Celestial Hulkbuster, so it, again, didn't really get to do anything, just like the rest of Tony's impressive suits, but it also caused Thor to become a Hulk and destroy the rest of it. By the way, the only way for Thor to be defeated was for Odin to give Bruce Banner the power of Mjolnir. It was literally Hulk Thor versus Thor Hulk, and Tony's just off to the side, chilling in the cosmic god's corpse that he turned into a mech suit. Comics are some of the stupid, most ridiculous things on the planet, and I fucking love them. Also, at the time of this recording, Tony has just revealed his Sentinel Buster, which is an extremely powerful suit made out of a metal called Mysterium, which is practically indestructible, immune to magic, and can even bypass the spider sense. Basically what happened is that when the bad guy that I mentioned earlier in the video took over Tony's company, they started making Sentinels out of Stark tech to hunt down mutants. Carnage fused with only one of those Stark Sentinels with the Extrembio to become insanely powerful, and to try to get his company back, Stark had to take on hundreds of them at the same time. So by teaming up with Riri Williams and Forge of the X-Men, Stark was able to take all that Mysterium and make this huge ass suit that's chock full of all the usual rockets and repulsors and lasers. But to be honest, the main thing that the Sentinel Buster has going for it is that it's just really freaking big. Tony claimed that the Sentinel Buster is the most energy hungry armor that he had ever developed, which is wild when you recall the God Killer Mark II was powered by eight nuclear reactors, but maybe writer Jerry Duggan didn't remember that. But regardless, the energy cost really added up, and because of the sheer number of Sentinels that he was up against, the suit just couldn't keep up with it, especially when the bad guy showed up in a one-of-a-kind War Machine Sentinel. But hot damn, this buster took down a truly absurd amount of bots on its maiden voyage. I'm really tired because I have to record these videos late at night with the air conditioning off for sound, so let's get through the quick honorable mentions so I can finally go to sleep. Um, there's the time that Iron Man's suit got a big magic upgrade by fusing with the Scabbard of Excalibur. There's also the time that Tony obtained the Power Cosmic and became the Iron God, which doesn't really count because, like, that's Tony's body and not a suit of armor that he built, but it's still neat and maybe worth including. In other universes, there is the Anti-Transformer armor when the Avengers fought the Decepticons, and in one of the endings of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, there's Stark building, like, a Galactus Buster suit, but we never actually got to see it in action. And finally, in the time where the Marvel and DC universes fused together, Iron Man and Green Lantern Lantern merge, which resulted in Iron Lantern. But also, there are multiple suits that Tony designed for people besides himself, which I covered in my dedicated award-winning video. So if you're hungry for more Iron Man knowledge, then feel free to snack on that. It's guaranteed to meet your daily iron consumption needs. I'm sorry, please like and subscribe. I'm going to bed now, bye.